Well, Election Day 2023 results are in, and Democrats scored big in some key races. Notable wins include Ohio, which voted to enshrine abortion rights at the state level, Virginia, where Democrats will now control both the state and Senate and, uh, houses of, ho and House of Delegates, and in Kentucky, where Democratic Governor Andy Beshear has, was reelected to a second term. President Biden weighed in on the victory, saying, quote, Americans once again voted to protect their fundamental freedoms and democracy won. Meanwhile, Republican candidate Chris Christie is blaming the Republican losses on Donald Trump, warning that Trump is a poison for the party. Let's face it, Donald Trump is political and electoral poison down ballot. Down ballot, he's in, his endorsement has led to Republican defeats in the House, uh, in the Senate, rather, and, and the House in 18. In 20, we lost the United States Senate and the White House. Uh, in 22, we underperformed miserably. And tonight, you're seeing us lose again. Well, Naomi Ruckham breaks down all of these results and what it means in the lead up to the 2024 presidential election. It was a big election night for Democrats across the country as the party scored victories in Ohio, Kentucky and Virginia. In Ohio, voters approved a measure to amend the state constitution, establishing the right to abortion. Crowds cheered as results rolled in just one year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Abortion is health care. Yeah! And abortion access is the law of the land in Ohio. In Kentucky, Democratic Governor Andy Beshear was reelected to a second term. This wasn't my win. This was our victory. It was a victory that sends a loud, clear message, a message that candidates should run for something and not against someone. Bashir has relished in broad approval for his handling of the pandemic and natural disasters. And in Virginia, Democrats are celebrating two wins at the state level, retaining their hold on the majority in the state Senate and flipping the House of Delegates. These victories come as President Biden faces daunting poll numbers with less than a year to go until the presidential election. In a social media post, the president said, voters vote, polls don't. Now let's go win next year. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Also in Ohio, voters passed a measure to legalize recreational marijuana. The new law will commercialize, regulate, and tax marijuana use for adults 21 and over. Ohio is the 24th state to pass such a measure, making recreational marijuana legal in almost half the country. In Mississippi, Republican Governor Tate Reeves has won a second term. As a staple in state politics, Reeves held on to a deep advantage as the incumbent, despite his Democratic challenger, Brandon Presley, putting up a much more competitive race than anticipated. And one of the five men exonerated in the Central Park Five case won a seat on the New York City Council last night. Yusuf Salam and four other black and Latino men were convicted in the 1989 Raven beating of a white jogger in Central Park. Salam was arrested when he was just 15 years old and imprisoned for almost seven years. Their convictions were later overturned thanks to DNA evidence. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I knew that I was counted out, but as they say, a setback is a great thing for a comeback. And look at this comeback that we are coming back to right now. Salon will represent Harlem on the city council after running unopposed for the seat. And in Rhode Island, Democrat Gabe Ammo made history. He won a special congressional race to become the first black congressman from Rhode Island. The 35-year-old is a former White House aide to former President Barack Obama and President Joe Biden. And he was heavily favored to win in the Blue Providence Area District. And Philadelphia has elected its first woman to lead the city. Sherelle Parker will be Philly's 100th mayor after running against Republican David O, her former colleague in, on Philadelphia City Council. Parker took the stage for her victory speech in South Philadelphia last night. That will put all of it to great use to work with you all to make Philadelphia the safest, cleanest, greenest big city in the nation with economic opportunity for all. 
Parker has spent 17 years in government and she resigned from city council in September of 2022 to run for mayor.